Hello. Children can suffer quite considerable distress without showing outward signs, at least in the short term, of their inner turmoil. They may cry a little more than other children, but not excessively so. Their reluctance to do certain things may be put down to obstinacy. Bouts of mild illness may be attributed to lack of physical stamina rather than the signs of psychological stress. In other words, the anxiety responsible for so much of what they say and do remains undetected until something dramatic happens. Now, you can assess a child's level of anxiety by taking a closer look at six of their most recent pictures of the human figure. Uh, these should be a full-length portrait, but they can be of men or women, adults or other children. If none are available, then I suggest you ask the child to draw some, especially for you, without, of course, explaining that you intend to use these to carry out any kind of an assessment. These pictures are best produced over a period of, say, three to four days to prevent the child from getting bored and rushing the last few pictures. Now, you want to examine each drawing for six signs of anxiety which clinical psychologists, the late Dr. Leonard Handler of the University of Tennessee and Dr. Joseph Regner of Michigan State University have shown to be associated with above average levels of anxiety in children aged between 5 and about 14 years of age. The first side to look for are omissions. Now these may be obvious, for example the absence of hands or feet, for example, or more subtly missing eyebrows, missing lips, or a coat, a coat with no buttons, laces admitted from shoes, small omissions from the drawing. The picture I'm showing you here was made by Tanya, who was a normally cheerful six-year-old who became withdrawn and moody after going to hospital for a minor operation. As you can see, she's left out both arms and the mouth, although a space has been left for it in the beard, while the eyes have no pupils. Now, omitting the arms is especially common in drawings made by anxious children and often relates to a particular life crisis. The nature of such a crisis and the way which affects the child's pictures I'll be discussing in my next video, the final one in this series. At first, Tanya's parents attributed the changes in her behaviour to a natural weakness after the surgery. However, when three months after leaving hospital and perfectly recovered in her health, physical health, the little girl remained unsettled, they sought my advice. I analysed a large section of Tanya's drawings and found they clearly showed she was highly anxious and it seemed likely that these fears were the underlying cause of her withdrawal and her moods. A review of all her paintings and drawings did more than merely confirm her anxiety in my mind, they strongly suggested its cause. By giving the necessary reassurances, Tanya's parents were able to set their daughter's mind at rest and she quickly became as cheerful and as outgoing as ever. The second feature to look out for in a child's drawings are distortions. I'm showing you a picture here which indicates these. This grotesque image was the work of eight-year-old Billy and it was drawn during a very unsettled period in the boy's life. His father, a farm manager, had been made redundant and the family were obliged to move from the country village where he'd been born and raised to a nearby busy town. Billy very much missed his friends and found life in the big city confusing and somewhat scary. His drawings at this time revealed many of the signs of anxiety. In this picture, for example, he has drawn notable distortions in the person's head and right shoulder. The next feature to watch out for is heavy pressure. 
This occurs when the child applies more pressure to the pencil or crayon than is necessary to create a clear line and suggests that inner stresses are revealing themselves through excessive muscle tension. The greater the tension, the stronger the anxiety behind it. Now, the quickest and easiest way of discovering if overly heavy pressure has been used is to apply the touch test. Now, of course, this will only work when the picture has been drawn on normal weight paper. All you have to do is run your fingers along the underside of each drawing to see whether the pencil or crayon has indented the paper sufficiently to create a series of easily detectable ridges. If present, then you should score the drawing as showing unusually heavy pressure and possibly increasing levels of stress and anxiety. The final three indicators of emotional distress in a young child's drawings involve the following. A turned down mouth, upraised arms, and arms turned inwards. In a study of more than 700 drawings, Dr. Cynthia Fox and her college at Yale University discovered that all these features are clear signs of underlying anxiety. If they are found together in a picture, their urgent message is that the child is feeling extremely anxious. This picture made by 11-year-old Colin. When he drew it, the boy had just started at a new school and as you can see, this picture contains two of the three sides I've just described. The mouth is turned down and the arms are raised more than 45 degrees above the body. Now, at the time it was drawn, Colin seemed a fairly happy child, although he was certainly very quiet, somewhat introverted, and not given to any great displays of emotion. His first term's report had been reasonably satisfactory, and he had made a few friends of his own age. Although neither his parents nor his teachers knew it at the time, Colin had become victim of a vicious protection racket within the school, organised by much older boys. They extracted a weekly payment from the younger and smaller pupils, in return for which they escaped being beaten up. Colin never said anything about this to his parents, but he secretly stole small amounts of money from them each evening to beat these demands. He remained silent about what was really happening, even after being caught by his parents and punished by his father for the stealing. It was only after I'd been able to review his work that the signs of anxiety in their son's drawings became apparent to them and led to a dramatic reassessment of his true feelings about the school. Once alerted to Colin's difficulties, his mother was able gradually to break through the barriers of fear and the natural reserves of a boy of that age, which had forced him to suffer in silence for so many months, as indeed had many of his classmates. This was reported to the school, and the gang quickly went out of business, and the little boy's life was no longer made a misery five days out of seven. So, if your child's drawings include a turned-down mouth, arms raised more than about 45 degrees above the body, or hands turned inwards, then unacceptably high levels of stress are being revealed. The greater the number present, the higher the level of anxiety being revealed, and the more probable it becomes that such fears are undermining self-confidence, happiness and health. Even if just one of these sides appears consistently in their drawings, then he or she must be assumed to be more than usually anxious. Childhood fears can be caused by situations, circumstances and activities that may appear very trivial to adults. They need not be as dramatic or as profound as those that I've described in the brief case histories which I've reported above. Even when fairly minor in adult eyes, they can generate damagingly high levels of anxiety in a child. Once you appreciate that a child is experiencing anxiety, you can often uncover and resolve the causes without too much further difficulty. 
Now, even when nothing can be done to remove the source of their fears, it's still possible to provide support and practical guidance to help them through a difficult period. Anxiety, often associated with depression, can also be created by an especially upsetting or distressing event. The emotions aroused may then continue long after the moment of trauma has passed. Such an incident is often called a life crisis and ways of resolving such crises in your child's life I'll be discussing in my next and final video on the hidden language of children's drawings and paintings. If you'd like to learn more about what children's drawings and paintings reveal about their emotions, their IQ and their personality, then I suggest you read our book, Your Child's Drawings, Their Hidden Meaning. As I said earlier, this was a book I co-authored with the American psychologist Dr. James Green, a man who specialises in what are called psychometrics, that's measuring how people are feeling and thinking and behaving. The 200 page long paperback includes numerous drawings and nine colour plates showing many of the images which I'm presenting in these videos. A copy costs £7.50 inclusive of postage and packing in the UK and I'm perfectly willing to mail it overseas although of course the postage costs will be somewhat higher. If you'd like to find out what it's going to cost then just email me uh, on the uh, address I give you at the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. Please do subscribe to be sure of keeping up to date with Dad and my own practical suggestions for changing your life by changing your mind. Thank you.